so we're already starting our free agency really hot and fast with Jeremy Grant being traded from Detroit Pistons to the Portland Trail Blazers. The Pistons are receiving the 36th overall pick in 2022 and the and a first round pick in 2025. I think that's from Milwaukee, if I'm not mistaken, from what Woj said. And the Blazers receive Jeremy Grant and a 46 overall pick. Now, do I think this is a major L? Not really. Do I think it's an L? Yeah. The only real notion I can get from hearing from Detroit fans is that they're trying to release cap space. Obviously, this Jeremy Grant's contract is pretty major for them. That they're releasing him or they're trading him to release some cap space for DeAndre Aiden to sign him to a Supermax. Do I think that's enough to count this as a W trade? No. I, even though DeAndre Aiden is a, a top 10 center in the league, no one can really argue that. He's maybe six or seven. He is not worth the Supermax, and that's not a championship caliber player as of right now, at least. I just don't see the culture changing in Detroit from this trade. Sure, you got two picks from it, but Milwaukee isn't getting or isn't going anywhere soon or in the next four years. And that that first round pick from Portland, sure, you, you, you'll get a good stuff. You'll get a top 15 pick. But this isn't so impactful on the roster that they're going to say, hey, we're going to next season. We want to make the playoffs. I, I don't think the Pistons are making the playoffs for the next two years. Now, do I think this is a major impactful acquisition for the Blazers? Not really. I mean, the, Jeremy Grant been advocating for him the past three years. I've been saying he's damn near an all-star player for the past three years. That guy's a stud. But does this make the, does this give Lillard the notion to stay? We might be able to win a championship. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a championship player they're adding. This is a good All Star, but I don't think they're really changing the culture in Portland anytime soon. Now the next immense thing on free agency, or at least the biggest looming topic, is Kyrie Irving. He's been on the hot seat for the past week. It's been pretty major the past few days because I think Brooklyn and them are having dif or Brooklyn and him are having difficulties having a, or making a long-term contract, if I'm not mistaken, or at least that was the quote from or a statement from every reporter in Brooklyn. Um, he's averaging 20, he averaged 23 points, 4 rebounds, and 6 assists. That a stellar year for Kyrie, even though he played very minimal games due to vaccine issues, him and having a, very much difficulties getting the vaccine due to religion, if, religion, if I'm not mistaken. But if, if Brooklyn can't get him long term, who knows what happens with Kevin Durant and them. The, the most, I guess, interested teams in him is Miami, Los Angeles, or the Clippers and Lakers, and Knicks. You'll be surprised the Knicks are actually in the run because they have a good amount of cap space. And not to mention, I don't see them keeping Kemba or Rose long term. They don't really seem to keep anyone long term as of right now besides RJ and Mitchell Robinson. Boy, if the Knicks can get Kyrie, do I think this is a championship team? No. No, that team's far from it. If Irving goes to Miami, sure as shit, that's a E. I mean, obviously Miami's a contender, but th that makes them probably the best team in the East. Uh, it just depends on the package, probably Hero and um, Duncan or Lowry, maybe. Um, now for the Clippers, they easily have enough assets for Kyrie. I don't think anyone can deny that. That's probably one of the best, if not the best, the or probably the deepest team in the league, if we're being honest, one healthy. That Clippers team... Ha just hasn't been healthy for the past three years. They just they just can't stay healthy. That's why they haven't made a long run or a deep run in the postseason. It's just due to health. But they are st extremely stacked in that assets. The Lakers are probably the most unpractical or the mo most non-practical because who the fuck are you giving up for Kyrie Irving? Let's be honest. Who you Tht your next few year picks if you even have any in Westbrook? First off, I don't even think Brooklyn's even remotely thinking about agreeing to that package at all. Unless you add AD to some sort of package, Brooklyn should even give a chance at even agreeing. Honestly, because Westbrook is probably the most logical one, but in no way is Brooklyn even should even think of agreeing that, honestly. At least keep your team, Ben Simmons, come back healthy, and really try to work things out with Kyrie Irving. Because... If Irving goes, I, it's really this is going to be a big tremor with Kevin Durant long term because there's been um, rumors that if Kyrie Irving leaves, there's going to be a big difficulty in keeping Durant, and there's going to be a lot of shootouts for packages for Kevin Durant from other teams. That's what report has been saying. They're trying to really destroy 
the relationship with Irving and um, Brooklyn to really at least free up Durant. Brooklyn, you gotta do whatever it takes to keep Kyrie Irving. It's just, you built this structure the past three to four years. It's almost been four years, surprisingly, that they acquired Kyrie Irving. But you, I know he's extremely unhealthy and obviously has some, I would say, off the court issues. Not really issues, but just some difficulties playing. Uh, you gotta do whatever it takes to keep him. I don't care if how big his contract is. At least it, as long as it's not over 40 mil a year, then you're cool, honestly. Because he's still a like top five point guard, or at least two guard in the league. Now I want to talk about Donovan Mitchell because I'm a Heat fan, and holy shit, I've been wanting Donovan Mitchell for I don't know how effing long. I've been wanting Levine too on the Heat for like three years because I've been knew he was a superstar, but. It's time now that the Jazz really have broken apart. They haven't been remotely successful in the postseason in the past seven years. Even the Gordon Hayward days, they just failed and failed and failed. Even though they built a decent roster and especially completely demolished everyone in the regular season, it obviously it means nothing in the regular season. Whatever happens, the stats are, etc. If you can't perform in the postseason, what's the point of all that? It's just it, that simple notion. It's clearly, it's evident that there's a fracture in his team, that they just can't get over the hill, or can't get over this hill, that they can't even get past the second round. Um, if Mitchell goes, go Barrett. It's obvious that he's going to go. Not with him, but who knows? He might go to the Bulls. I've heard, I heard two teams. I heard Minnesota and then Chicago. I can easily see him go to Chicago because that team desperately needs an elite defender. Even though Caruso or Alonzo are good defenders, you need Gobert to at least be in the paint because there's no interior whatsoever on that team. Minnesota, it's been evident Cat has really struggled defensively in every facet. Gobert would help that out and I don't mind Cat playing the four at all, but you would have to give up a lot probably for Gobert. Donovan Mitchell, I think his top two teams, are or his, the two teams that really have interest is Miami and New York. I can easily see him go to New York. I can actually see them giving up Cam Reddish and etc. Or like Kemba Walker. For Miami, you're probably going to have to give up Tyler Hero. I think that's almost a guarantee. Unless somehow the Jazz retardedly take Lowry and Debo or Duncan Robinson. I don't know how that would work. But... I can see those two teams really making a push for Donovan Mitchell, especially Miami Heat. They've been extremely aggressive, or from what reports have been saying. So, do I think do I think Mitchell and Gobert stay? No, I, I think it's a good 80% chance, or at least that practical percentage that they're probably gone. He, they're probably gone. You gotta you gotta keep this notion. This guy's a top three fucking shooting guard. Like his, his value must be extremely high that you want two at least two picks or at least a, an all star player in return. And it's also just a sentiment that. Utah's not gonna get any. They're not gonna get much better with their small market and just the cast base that they have. They also gotta. They gotta sign Mitchell to the goddamn max, so that ain't gonna help pretty much at all. Um, yeah, I, I can see them leaving honestly. So that's another looming topic around free agency. Now there's teams. There's obviously other moves that are other rumors going on free agency that PJ Tucker declined as I think player option. It's, it's either one he's gonna go to either Philadelphia or he's going to re-sign with the Heat for a bigger contract. I think he's going to re-sign with the Heat just off a really big contract, maybe like who knows, 9 mil per year. And that's pretty that's pretty big for a role player, especially at his age. He's not going to get any healthier and not to mention he's not going to get any younger. Um but I do expect him to at least st at least stay with a contender and at least stay with Miami. Um another rumor is John Collins. John Collins has supposedly been rumored to the Lakers, I don't know how the fuck that's possible. What would Atlanta receive for John Collins? He's been extremely unhappy the past two years, and the guy's damn near top. He he can argue in health he's a top seven power forward. You can really argue that elite stretch, and I mean absolutely absurd verticality the guy has at his height. I mean he's just a powerhouse at the rim. We all know he's a great rebounder. We all know what John Collins is. He he's elite. Um, do I expect him to stay with Atlanta? No, I don't. I don't. With the moves they made the past few years, just, I mean, not keeping Reddish was a problem. And then Gall Gallinari supposedly not signing the contract back again to stay, or being waived, I think. 
is a problem. They, uh, Trey's not getting any help, and I think Capella's pretty much unhappy too. So, yeah, Atlanta might be kind of having a fracture right now. Uh, more rumors. Nicholas Batum is considering, I think, changing teams. This is a big blow to the Clippers if this happens. He's been pretty fucking good the past two years. I will not lie to you. That guy's been an elite two-way stretch or at least two-way sharpshooter, and he's been surprisingly improving with health. So I don't know where he might go, who knows, but any team that gets him at the four position has improved, not dramatically, but do it do it to at least decent extent. Um, one final one, James Wiseman's rumor to maybe stay with the Warriors has pretty much been a lot of packages, or at least rumored packages for the past year on Wiseman. I have I rank Wiseman highly skill-wise. I mean, he's very unique as a player, decent rim protector, decent rebounder, but at least offensively, you can see the flashes like, holy shit, this guy's pretty unique offensively. Like, just a three-level scorer. When healthy, he can dominate, honestly, offensively. At least what I see from him. So I don't know why his value is so low. Um, for my final notions, Jeremy Grant, his value is way too fucking low. The way the way that Detroit just obviously wash him away. At least get more from him or get more from Portland. Like, I don't know, um, Josh Hart or something like that. But I understand why they didn't package too much for Grant because... In the next few days, who knows? They might sign Aiden to a supermax if Aiden declines the Sun shit or the Suns um, deals. They they might they might really sign Aiden to supermax. But you already know my thoughts on Aiden and uh, the Detroit situation. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I know this is very short and quick. Um, I just recently just heard about the news, so I just had to upload it because I'm trying to keep y'all updated and stirring stuff. And uh, if you did enjoy, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you know if you know someone that needs help physically, mentally, or emotionally, please check the link in the description. This is an extension to worldwide slash national hotlines. So if you or someone you know needs help, please check the link in the description. It's free and it's worth reading. Uh, my name is Chris, and hopefully you guys have a great night. And I'm out. Peace. Yeah,